All right, so I feel like I'm a bit late to this party, kind of like the tall girl. But over the lockdown, my friends and I have been watching a lot of movies online through watch parties. We'd been talking about it for ages, but we finally sat down and we watched Tall Girl, which is actually a really good timing because Tall Girl 2 is coming out very soon. And I feel a lot of people have already heard about it and seen like millions of people online talking about how shit it is. It's like sharks to chum. So I thought maybe I should give my two cents or centimeters. When I watch this movie, I kind of look at it as if it's a comedy, like kind of parodying itself because some of the things that happen in it are just so absurd. So I wanted to talk about it. So I thought you can play along at home with a fun little drinking game. So I want you to take a shot every time someone says either the word tall or talks about how tall the main character is. You know that really, really, really tall girl? So an interesting point that a friend of mine made about watching films that are like so bad it's good. So in order for something that is bad to be entertaining and funny to watch, it needs to have a few things. It can't just be a shit movie. So we kind of discussed it and it seems like what makes them enjoyable, even though they're bad movies, is the budget needs to be pretty high. And I think it needs to be like structured like a real film with like actual flow and like some attempt at writing. And the last thing is I think it really needs to have good editing. Because the reason I say this is I think so many people talk about how much they love bad movies, but there's a big difference between something say like The Room or something like Birdemic. Both of them are awful films, but when you watch The Room, you watch it for fun, you watch it with your friends, you laugh, you see how bad the acting is, it's great. But when you watch something like Birdemic, yeah, you can laugh about how shit it is, but just when you watch the movie, you realize it's structured poorly, the acting is awful, but not even like in a good way. It's just not something you want to watch ever. Like for an example, the first five minutes of the film is just the guy driving and that's it. So it loses its novelty really quickly and just becomes like a boring pile of garbage. But this is probably going to be something I'm going to discuss in a separate video. So let's get back to Tall Girl. So the movie begins with our girl sitting in the library. And something really important to note about this scene is that unlike the film might suggest, She's sitting down and she looks like she's regular height. So I don't think anything fishy is going on here. So across the room, she sees a very handsome boy and they hit it off right away. Which is kind of tragic because his alienation is the source of his strength, but then also- But it's also the source of his problems. I think you're starting to get it. <laughs> <laughs> so remember how I said before how she looked like she was regular height? Well, you bloody idiot, she was sitting down. She's actually really tall. I know I've only known you for like two minutes, but would you maybe wanna? What I maybe wanna what? Also, I love the way she's just like towering over this dude. Like she's six one. All right, that is tall. I'm not denying it, but this dude's just overreacting. Look at his face. Being tall does not warrant a reaction like that. I know I've only known you for fifty three seconds, but I wanted to know if maybe you wanna. So this is Jodie, and if you haven't noticed already, she's tall. I think it's important to note that most people and most characters have personalities. Things they like, things they dislike, things that make them unique from other people. Not Jodie. She's tall, and that's about it. She doesn't like that she's tall, and that's her whole personality, apparently. You know that really, really, really tall girl that you go to school with? The one that people call LeBron. Skyscraper, daddy long legs. Oh yeah, that really tall girl, the one they call three kids disguised in a trench coat. All this fuss over someone that's 6'1". So I guess the social equivalent to a tall girl would be a short boy, right? And I'm a bit under the average height. I'm only 5'7", so technically I'm a short boy. But I don't go around calling myself elf man or baby legs, but uh, maybe I should. Also, everyone at her high school only knows one joke and it's not even a good one. Well, how's the weather up there? How's the weather up there? How's the weather up there? You think your life is hard? I'm a high school junior wearing size 13 Nikes. Men's size 13 Nikes. Beat that. You think your life is hard? Try walking a day in my shoes. Oh wait, you can't, because they're too big. They'll just slip right off you. So now this is when we meet Jodie's best friend, Farida. And with just the 10 seconds we've seen of her, I'd assume she's the one who gets bullied out of the two of them. Farida, how much longer do I have to endure this? Just trying to start my next class off on a high note. Well, I start every class off on a high note. So then we're introduced to Harper, Jodie's older sister. Just as a quick side note, I think Jodie might want to sleep with her sister. This is my super hot older sister, Harper. It's perfect. You're perfect. <laughs> I'm ready to go all the way. But Harper isn't as perfect and hot as Jodie says she is. Um, she has allergies, so she's basically a troll. She got Grandpa Larry's allergies. At least she didn't get Grandpa Joe's paralysis. 
So now this is when we meet Jodie's parents and she's sitting down for dinner with them. And I know this may come as a shock to you, but they're gonna be talking about, drum roll, Jodie's height. Fine. You feeling okay? Like, no, headaches, irregular heartbeats are unexplainable. Dad, I, I know that you live with this constant fear that I'm just gonna keep growing and growing until all of my vital organs explode. But really, if I was gonna have any major health problems, I think I would have had them by now. Okay, so a lot about being tall is the only personality trait Jodie has. She's also really good at piano, but she's like kind of arrogant about how good she is. Why don't you play anymore? I'm just, is it joint pain? When you're good at something, other people tend to want to watch you do it, and I don't need to give people another reason to look at me. Okay, so now it's the next day at school, and we're introduced to Jodie's other best friend, Jack Dunkelman. This is Jack Dunkelman. And you may be asking, why is he carrying his books in a milk crate? Well, I've been friends with him for years and that's still a mystery to me. What's even more of a mystery is why he's crazy about someone twice his size. Good morning. Hi. So David Blaine called me? You'll never believe it. He just wants to know when you and I are gonna make magic together. Guy Fieri called and he wants to know when you and I are gonna be visiting Flavortown. Also, walking around with a crate like that looks like it's one of those guys at the theater who sells choc tops. Choc top here! Get your choc tops here! So one comment that I have is that she has these friends, but not one part of the movie do they show any reason for these people to want to be her friend. She only talks about herself and she's really mean to them, especially the short boy Jack. It's like their whole relationship is them telling themselves they're friends, but it's just him hitting on her constantly and her being mean to him. Also, in Jodie's defense, why would you want to be friends with a kid who's just constantly hitting on you and making you uncomfortable? It's like she's using her height as an excuse to not want to be together, but this dickhead can't take the hint. He thinks if he starts walking around on stilts, then that's it, they're together now. Dating a guy who's shorter than me would just draw more attention to how much of a freak I am. Wait, but half the guys in the school are shorter than you are. Hence my conundrum. Wait, so doesn't that mean the other half are either the same height or taller than her? That's still a good amount, no? I just think it's crazy you won't go out with me just cause, cause what? You think that at any moment some taller than you, funny, intelligent, nice, perfect guy is just gonna walk through that door? I mean, it's, come on, it's crazy. Okay, so now we get to meet Stig, a beautiful blonde boy from Sweden. Is this the first time we get to see the Stig without his mask on? Hey, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, the guy is decent looking. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's obvious, but, you know, you don't know him. He's probably dumb as a... Also, what kind of dickhead just walks in the first day of class and just starts writing on the board? Like, hmm, yes. My god, it's so stupid. So, Jodie instantly has a crush on Stig, but she's too self-conscious to talk to him. So, if you break this movie down simply, it's about a girl who has very little self-confidence, trying to make her way through high school feeling judged, self-conscious, and just not good enough. See, those are some really relatable themes that could work well. Everyone feels this way when they're growing up, and there are so many good movies and TV shows that capture that really well. A movie that I personally love and would recommend to everybody is The Edge of Seventeen. I feel like that movie captures what Tall Girl wanted to say, but does it in a way that just makes it feel relatable, doesn't matter who you are watching it. And that's where I think Tall Girl misses the mark completely. Instead of making a relatable coming of age story about a girl who doesn't accept herself and can't find her place because she's very self-conscious about her height, we're left with this super shallow, annoyingly vain movie about a very unlikable girl who just happens to be tall. And that's why I want to be just like Taylor Swift when I grow up. Taylor Swift? More like Taller Swift. <laughs> that's the coolest joke I've ever heard. Okay, so before we finish up, there's one more scene I want to talk about. So after everything, Jodie finally realizes her self-worth and she finally gains some confidence to step out on stage and tell everybody. You know what, I, I get it. I, I'm tall, really, really tall, and it's, it's the thing that's haunted me my entire life. It's, um, it's defined me. I'm so much more than, than just a tall girl. I'm a sister. I'm a best friend. I'm smart, I'm fun, and I play piano, and I'm, I'm really, really good at it. 
being tall actually is what makes me me, and I, I, I like me. Yeah, Jody! This is the stupidest resolution to any movie I've ever seen. It's so poorly written and literally gives no reason for any of the characters to relate to what she's saying. It's literally just someone bragging about themselves. I know the only reason you don't like me is because I'm tall, but I'm actually so smart, way smarter than you, and I'm so much funnier than you are as well. See that little bitch down there? I'm the best friend she could ever ask for. She's so lucky to have me. So I think it goes without saying that this movie isn't great. I had a good time watching it, but I think that had more to do with laughing at the movie itself. I would recommend watching it with a group, with a few drinks, you're probably in for a good night. But if you're wanting a fun and meaningful coming of age film, I'd stay away from this movie. That being said, I am so excited for Tall Girl 2. Thank you so much for watching, take care.